I'm back, and I have a new trick. The literature devil is ten times as slick as the last time. The last time you saw me. Now that I know that you really adore me. <laughs> If I'm occasionally mean, it's normally because they deserve it. Drama, mystery, mass hysteria. The internet is like a ravenous beast always on the prowl for its next meal. And recently, actress Rena Sofer and voice actress Tara Strong became the latest course in the endless buffet of internet outrage when they went head to head with an Uber driver. I think the whole incident, as far as the general public is concerned, was best summarized in a now deleted tweet by Strong. Dear Uber, your driver almost killed Rena Sofer and I because we are Democrats. He asked what we were doing and proceeded to scream and yell at us and say we were evil, racist, demon, crazy lefties. We told him we wanted to get out and he began driving erratically. We videotaped his abuse. And boy was there a video. A video that backfired horribly on Sofer and Strong. Especially because the actress's description of what happened didn't quite match up with what we see in the video. If you read the tweets, it would seem like this guy suddenly became John Candy from Plane, Trades, and Automobiles. Which, going by the video, obviously wasn't the case. The video immediately opens with what we bookworms and JRPG lovers like to call in medias res, or right in the middle of things. Right from the start, the driver is calling the two actresses racist, seemingly for some offense that occurred before the recording started. And it really doesn't help that Sofer says we were born here in an insulting manner. The video also shows the driver being relatively cooperative and complying with the request to pull over. And then you hear the actresses let the guy know that they have him on video and say that he'll be fired in that familiar malicious glee most of us have heard before. In the context of what we initially see, it looks like another case of two liberal elite metaphorically stomping on a working class immigrant harder than the Clinton stomp on the dreams of little Haitian kids, all for daring to like America. But honestly, I don't think the backlash erupted so spectacularly just because of what we saw in the video. I don't even think it was because of any perceived racism. I think the backlash was so extreme because we've seen this all happen too many times before. These sorts of incidents have become a routine in our minds. It's kind of like how once Trump was elected, all the left-leaning comedians instantly stopped being funny because we already knew the punchline to every joke. I mean, we get it already. Conservatives are evil backwards rednecks who hate everyone and orange man is bad. In other words, to anyone who's been paying attention to silly left-wing antics, all you have to do is hear about a confrontation like this to guess more or less how it went. One, it's recorded. Two, the recorder plays the victim. Three, there's an accompanying tweet. And four, the recorder will try to get the offender fired. We've seen this happen with comics creator Ethan Van Skyver, where the gaggle of far-left ideologues that have infected the comics industry pushed him out of his profession because he's a Republican who voted for Trump. So I think the massive outrage was a sum of gathering anger said to be unleashed on any instance of liberal lunacy. But was there really any liberal lunacy here? Is all this backlash against Strong and Sofer actually justified? Now look, it's very easy to sympathize with the driver, and that's probably because he has a lot of good points. The guy said, you are racist, the lefties have a mental disorder. Sure, the left can rail against right-wing racism all day, but here's the difference. Right-wing racism usually gets punished. Left-wing racism gets you a job at the New York Times. Oh, and remember when Don Lemon, an anchor on CNN who is still an anchor on CNN, said, we have to stop demonizing people and realize that the biggest terror threat in this country is white men. Most of them radicalized to the right and we have to start doing something about them. We have to stop demonizing people, it's all the white devil's fault. He also wanted to place a ban on white men, officially making him more racist than Donald Trump, who at worst wanted to ban an ideology. And to actually help Trump's point, recently Sinead O'Connor turned Muslim and immediately came out as either racist or just hateful of everyone who isn't Muslim. You know, 
like a terrorist. So thanks for that, Sinead. Appreciate it. But it's not all anti-white people. Remember when Hillary Clinton said that white people need to hear the legitimate cries of black people? Yeah. This is more of that left-wing white man's burden racism they love so much. It's up to the enlightened white liberals to save the silly brown people because they can't help themselves. And as a devil of color myself, I find that terribly offensive. Oh, and who could forget Kelly Osbourne's delightful Freudian-esque slip when she said, if you kick every Latino out of the country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? Of course, she corrected herself over that one. But I thought I'd toss that in anyway because it perfectly highlights the open secret that the liberal left sees minorities as nothing more than voter slaves and something to stand on so they can look down on everyone else a whole lot easier. The Uber driver also said, I don't want to talk to you. You make no logic. You make no logic so far. In referring to modern Democrats, again, he has a point. Unless you've seen socialism, a system that has probably brought down more countries than Adolf Hitler, with its literal 100% failure rate and still think, yeah, we should bring that here to America. It'll be great. Or still think allowing millions of migrants into the US unchecked all at once is a good idea because it's the nice thing to do. I mean, Sweden tried that. Now it's practically the rape capital of Europe, but that's all right. After all, Muslims outrank women on the oppression pyramid. And could someone measure the irony levels of conservatives being mocked for electing a reality TV star who was also a self-made billionaire, a real estate mogul, and actually had one of the highest rated reality TV shows on the network only to have the liberal elite proudly elect a bartender who can drop a small fortune on a pantsuit, but somehow doesn't have the foresight to set money aside for rent. You make no logic indeed. The driver also accused them, again, in reference to the left and Democrats, of ruining America. And to that I say, well, other than socialism and approving of mass migration, what could push America toward the brink of ruin worse than normalizing pedophilia? It's kind of been pushed aside now, but let's not forget how the far left made a huge push to lump pedophiles under the lug butt umbrella. So I get where the driver is coming from. However, if you look closely, the situation may not be as black and white as it seems, especially when you consider that the driver's grievances weren't really aimed at Strong or Sofer in particular, but at Democrats in general. Why is that important? Because whether you realize it or not, the entire controversy actually revolves around the reasoning behind the driver's anger. The whole situation is short a few pieces of a complete puzzle. Even notable critics of the incident, like Richard Amanda Mills, acknowledges that we can't see the whole picture. It's just the picture that we do have isn't particularly flattering. Fortunately, I have a little more light to shed on the matter. You see, soon after the event, I responded to Tara Strong with a critical article of my own, mainly because I thought she'd finally gone completely insane. You know, like Stephen Blum, who expressed much disappointment that North Korea wouldn't be dropping nukes on the US anytime soon to make Trump look bad. Believe it or not, Strong may hold firm liberal beliefs, and more notably firm anti-Trump opinions, but relatively speaking, she's been one of the most reasonable. Even post-election back in 2016, something I pointed out here. Because you know that cold realization many celebrities experienced when they they found out that enormous sections of their fan base were pro-Trump and then promptly dumped their pants. I affectionately call that particular kind of pants dumping a John DiMaggio. What's the definition of bigotry again? Oh, that's right. As my previous tweet noted, Strong never turned on her fans. But what I think acts as even more solid proof that Strong is not the crazy left-wing celebrity people see in the video is the fact that she read my entire article on her and still decided to open a dialogue. Although I have since deleted the original article as had not spread CNN information, I've put a link to my blog in the description so you can see more or less how the piece might have read. But if you don't feel like taking a look, let's just say I am not kind these days when it comes to left-wing craziness. Strong offered to share more context on what happened, so here's where we think back for a moment. What are the most concerning issues here? When most people look at the video, what factors really cause the most outrage? As I mentioned earlier, I think the real source for the outrage was that the video framed two liberal elite getting offended at their Uber driver because he dared fight back against their left-wing opinions. And many of us are so hungry to see this exact situation. Every day we see dozens of left-wing celebrities insult America, watch them say how evil and stupid conservatives are, watch them preach tolerance while demonizing a whole race just for the color of their skin, or like how the liberal elite demand that people take in refugees but refuse to take in any themselves. I guess they just have no room in their million dollar mansions. No, it's the people huddling in a two-room hovel, living paycheck to paycheck. Those are the people with all the room. And unlike Cumberbatch and Lily Allen, no one else in the world has any kids to take care of. No, 
It's the people wondering if they'll have electricity next month that are the racist bigots for saying that babies suddenly taking in millions of refugees might be a bad idea. To see someone finally shove some reality right into the faces of some of those liberal elites is pretty cathartic. It's like watching King Joffrey choke to death on poison over and over again. We're so hungry to see that in fact that we blind ourselves to things, just to shape the situation to fit our desired narrative. What's that? You want evidence to support that this all might be blown a little out of proportion? Well. As always, I'm more than happy to oblige. Question 1. Were Sofer and Strong going crazy on a driver because he sided with Trump? Well, not according to the video. I actually don't, I don't want to spend the next hour fighting with you about Trump because right. you have your opinion and I don't, I completely respect that. Sofer outright states that she respected the driver's opinion and then tried to defuse the situation so they can continue the drive. Because in case you missed it. I actually don't, I don't want to spend the next hour fighting with you about Trump. Yeah, they still had an hour's ride ahead of them. And it should be noted that both Sofer and Strong were perfectly willing to let the matter die. Question 2. Were Sofer and Strong being racist against an immigrant? This is the big one. And it sounds pretty strange, doesn't it? Being racist against immigrants? That's what evil right-wing MAGA hat-wearing psychopaths supposedly do. So why is it happening here? Well, this matter is actually supported by two factors. One, the driver calling them racist. And two, Sofer saying we were born here, as if to suggest that she was a real American or the driver was not due to his immigrant roots. So let's tackle each one separately. One. What's the real reason the driver decided to call them racist? Well, since the political discussion clearly wasn't going to be dropped anytime soon, the subject eventually maneuvered its way to immigration. I'm just curious how you got how you got your citizenship. How? Yeah. I applied for citizenship. You you applied. Yes. So after you came here, yes. Did you go home? No, I did not. I applied in '86. Yes. So you came here without the intention of becoming a citizen, yeah, and you right. decided not to leave. Yeah, that's right. So under Trump's rules, you'd be kicked out I today. Yeah, was under, under rules. I, I asked for, for citizenship. I yeah. went to the process. Remember when I said that the driver had a point when he mentioned that modern leftists are proudly racist against white people? Pay close attention to this. So it's under other presidents, you were able to do that, and but this now president that it is so decided it that nobody else is allowed to do, to do it unless way. you're white. I would have to do it differently. I know there's a lot going on here, but in case you missed it, let me clear up what just happened. Sofer, under other presidents, you were able to do that, but now the government's decided that nobody else is allowed to do it unless you're white. Driver, scoffs and repeats, unless you're white, you are such a racist. First of all, you can only get into the US if you're white? I'd like to see evidence on that because I haven't found any, unless Asians are now white people. Second, now there's a lot of talking going on, but since the driver is calling leftism a mental disorder, I think it's fair to guess that he isn't calling Sofer and Strong racist because they're attacking his heritage. He's calling them racist because with Sofer's white people comment, it seems as if she's running right along with the all white people are evil narrative that the modern left loves so much, which actually is racist. But as far as I can tell, she isn't going that route. Sofer was simply trying to infer that Donald Trump was a racist for something he didn't actually do. And then this happens. I'm a racist. You are racist. The lefty are such a The only disorder. way you can be Driver, you are racist. The left are such a mental disorder. Remember when I said that the driver's outrage wasn't really aimed at Sofer or Strong, but at left-wingers as a group? What you just saw was the moment the driver switches from arguing with two actresses and starts arguing against the left as a whole. In other words, he goes from addressing the individual to addressing the group, a straw man argument. Specifically, in the driver's eyes, all the things the leftists have been guilty of suddenly become things Sofer and Strong are guilty of. So has a left been racist? Yeah, quite a bit. But were Sofer and Strong being racist toward an immigrant? If you're going by the video and being honest, no. Of course, that didn't stop Sofer from spewing out this nonsense. The only way you can be racist is if you can control. If you can control and the old racism equals prejudice plus power defense. Oh dear. But that isn't the statement that got the actresses in trouble. It was this one. You guys no. ruined America. We ruined America? We ruined America? We are Americans. We were born here. We were born here. 
So, did Sofus say we were born here as a way of belittling an immigrant driver? Well, let's go over it again. What was said exactly? Driver, you guys talking about leftists in general now, ruined America. Sofer, we ruined America? We are Americans. We were born here. Given this context, when Sofer says she was born in America, she wasn't trying to degrade the driver for being an immigrant. Sofer said it to emphasize that she too was an American, suggesting that she too wants what's best for America. Make it great again, so to speak. So, we're strong in Sofer being racist? It doesn't look that way, at least not towards the driver. In fact, Sofer clarifies her statement when the driver refers to it again. You said you were born here. What's I the was difference? born here because you, you questioned What's me as difference? an American. No, I did not. You, you did. That. You, you absolutely did. You're making no logic. Another point of contention revolved around the actresses wanting to get the driver fired, as you can see here. I'm so excited to send this video to your boss. Yeah. Please. Please, please send it. You yeah. will be fired. Now, this is the part where I saw red, more than usual anyway. Censorship is in vogue as far as the far left is concerned, whether that be banning conservatives from social media or firing Trump voters for the mere act of voting the wrong way. But it's on this point in particular that Strong shared some insight on why she wanted the driver fired. First, yes, I can hear the malice in their voices as they tell the driver that he's getting fired. But upon second viewing, it's here that I decided to ask myself if I were the one being insulted and suddenly being held accountable for all the evils associated with people who oppose the radical left by my Uber driver, would I enjoy it? Yes, but I know when most people use Uber, they probably aren't hoping for a heated discussion with their driver. According to Strong, the reason why she reported the driver to Uber was because if he was willing to berate customers who made it clear they didn't want to argue politics over politics and then continue to push the conversation to the point where he couldn't complete his job and then make those customers feel unsafe when he was requested to drop them off, he might not have the temperament for the job. Strong explained that regardless of what actually happened, in that moment, she felt unsafe and didn't want future customers to go through the same thing. To quote, If you watch near the end, he narrowly misses a Tesla. The first spot he wanted to drop us was completely unsafe. He changed lanes without looking or signaling. We live right next to me. Fabulous. We need to stand next to each That's other. That's probably why you believe yes. his nonsense. Oh, yes? I'm going yes. to talk to Benjamin You find, the, you find the nearest uh, gas station yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, you I'm can drop us off. Find the, the table. nearest gas station me. and you, you said you drop us off. You get, don't let me, you don't yeah. let me have my own opinion. Because yeah, no really. parking any time. You, you can't drop us off here. It's not legal. I We've got you on video. You, you drop us off want. in a safe place. I told you, anywhere the very you first gas station you can send us. You, you can drop us off, right okay? Oh, Ross, Ross, there, there you go. You there you go. Finish. You see? You weren't getting me fired because I don't think like because you. Because you're rude. <laughs> no, you're we're rude. not getting you fired this is, this because is... we don't think like you. We're getting you fired because we hired you as an Uber driver and you've done nothing but yell at us. And now we've come to the real question. According to the original recording, the actresses appeared to have, at one point, asked the driver for his political opinion, especially because the driver does insist that he was asked his opinion. But how did the whole confrontation really start? Normally, in instances like this, it's the liberal who's the aggressor. Ted Cruz being attacked at the restaurant, the riots, a horde of rabid leftists trying to throw Tucker Carlson out of town as if this were still the Old West, so it's understandable to assume that this was yet another instance of a pro-Trump person being confronted by leftists. So what exactly happened? Well, it all started with this person, Megan Godfrey, the woman with the smile that says, I hacked into your phone and am now wondering why your ex disliked two of your tweets, was running for Congress in District 89 of Springdale, Arkansas. Her campaign had sent a script to Strong and Sofer, your typical campaign ad. Hi Arkansas. Hi Arkansas! I'm Tara Strong. I'm Rena Sofer. And we are making a special video to make sure y'all get out and vote! Yes, this is a very, very important election. We really, really need to make our voices heard this year. So important and we love you Arkansas and we're thinking of you and we really love Megan, Megan Godfrey. Godfrey. Yes. Strong and Sofer managed to complete the video in their second Uber for obvious reasons. But according to Strong, it was trying to record this video in the first Uber that sparked the confrontation. The trigger for him was when we said, this election is so important. He interrupted the filming of it to ask why it's an important election. He badgered three or four times before Rena decided to answer. And then he interrupted again. This was the script we were given by Arkansas's campaign person. Note, there is nothing in there about Trump, Trumpers, or even Republicans. 
Republicans. To summarize, according to Strong, they were trying to film a video for Meghan Godfrey, but the driver kept interrupting to ask why this election was so important. From there, he was off to the races. Strong's points are supported by the initial reaction of the actresses. If you remember, Sofer immediately tried to shut down the conversation by saying that she respected his opinion but would rather not get into a political argument, a point that is later referred to again. You will get me fired because I don't think like because you. Because you're rude. No, <laughs> you're we're rude. not getting you fired this is, this because is. we don't think like you. We're getting you fired because we hired you as an Uber driver and you've done nothing but yell at us and, and, so and insult had, us. And had, no, we didn't so ask big. you and we have it on no, video that we asked you to not have this conversation no, with us. That, yes, no, we did. We opinion. said it's your opinion yeah, and it's you our found, opinion and let's let it go. If you listen closely, the driver does say that the actresses had asked his opinion. He then goes on to say that they're only upset that he didn't give them the response that they wanted. Maybe that's what happened, but unfortunately that part isn't available. Judging by what we do see, it seems that this was more of a misunderstanding, that the driver likely thought or felt he was asked his opinion because of the political nature of Sofer and Strong's Arkansas video. And considering how heated politics can make people today, and how heated the conversation got, it's understandable that there could be some confusion amidst the fray. But in the end, evidence better supports the argument that the driver decided to start the political conversation and not Strong or Sofer. Look, I'm not here to think for you. If you believe Sofer and Strong are still in the wrong, so be it. I am always one to jump at the chance to mock liberal lunacy. However, I do it not just out of a euphoric sense of sadistic glee, but because mocking tyrannical lunacy is the right thing to do. But so is defending people when they might have a point. While I can sympathize with the driver's outrage toward the modern left, it's difficult for me to sympathize with the lack of professionalism. Whether the driver believed he was asked to give his political opinion or not, it's never a good idea to enter a political conversation with the customer. And even if he was asked his opinion, the driver should have refused to participate. Why? Because no matter how the argument turns out, there's no net gain. And if you're of the mind that celebrities shouldn't talk politics, that comic pros should act more professionally, or that restaurants shouldn't refuse customers who voted for Trump, then you might agree that this driver wasn't completely innocent. In the war against liberal lunacy, occasionally it's healthy to shift the focus away from owning the libs and focus more on tearing into lunacy where it exists. Because as the God Emperor said himself, Any big fat love find common ground to halt the spread of lies. And we must do it big fat love find common ground to halt the spread of lies.